Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're just going to give it a few seconds to make sure everyone is in from the waiting room. All right, so welcome back, Sylvia Shalatsky from Droby Creative, whose topic today is Instagram for Realtors. Take it away, Sylvia. Great, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you to Louise and her team for putting this series together. Um, like we mentioned today, we will be discussing Instagram for Realtors. And some of the topics that we will cover is personal versus business accounts. Um, optimizing your bio on your Instagram account, uh, Instagram stories, um, algorithm. Questions that you might have from today. And I will be checking that group up until December 18th to answer any of your questions from any of the series we've uh, gone over. Um, so in terms of Instagram, it's a very well suited channel for real estate marketing. Um, the photo and video based content that you can post easily showcases the properties that you may have. Um, it is, does have a huge um, user base. Um, there is over 1 million monthly active uh, users on the um, channel, and there is paid campaign options for you to run ads, which is very useful on Instagram and Facebook uh, accounts. Um, one of the things uh, during the pandemic that really helped uh, the real estate business were online tours. They have become very popular, especially where there's uh, stay at home orders uh, in place. It allows you to kind of give an overview of a tour um, th either through Zoom or on your account uh, that you can put. Um, so this is a really good and alternative to having people come in for open housing or even for certain clients to come in and take a look at the property. Uh, and it gives great opportunities to highlight those different um, home listings. What are, the, what are some of the uh, main differences between a business versus a personal profile? Um, just a little aside, a business profile, personal profile, or a creator account, um, the Instagram algorithm doesn't give weight to one over the other. If you are successful in either of those profiles, um, that's wonderful. The differences are that each account has a little bit more functionality. locations. So if you do have your office that you'd want to list, um, it will display that. It allows you to review your follower analytics. So it gives you good insights into um, when your followers are online, who, what their demographics are, um, and what their top content that they're reviewing on your accounts. And it also allows you to run your Instagram ads whereas a personal profile won't allow you to have those extra features. So good idea to switch over to the personal profiles to gain those valuable functionalities. And like I mentioned, um, unlike a business profile, an Instagram creator profile is meant to be used by influencers. So I get a lot of questions, which one would I use? Uh, creator versus business account. A really you're using a creator Instagram account if you're trying to build a fan base or a community. So public figures, artists, influencers would typically use a creator account, whereas a business account is when you have a product or service, something that you're selling. Um, you'll get specific insights that are a little bit more tailored to that type of an account. 
One of the things that you really want to do when you have your business account is you want to um, optimize your Instagram bio. So what you'll want to do is include a business name, uh, what your real estate focus is. Uh, if you're using a particular tagline for your business, you'll want to include that in your bio. Uh, don't be afraid to use some emojis uh, to kind of spice up the bio area and to give it a little bit more personality. And one of the things that you can add in your bio now is hashtags. Um, so for instance, uh, Campbellville, Ontario, real estate, uh, things of that nature. So that way, um, if people are following those particular hashtags, uh, you will end up showing up on that particular hashtag profile. And I'll get into that a little bit more as we're going along, uh, what those hashtag profiles are and what, how they can help you. So those are the, some of the things that you will want to include in your bio if you haven't done so already. And the thing you want to keep in mind is it's not set in stone. You do want to change that up every once in a while if there is a particular property or there is uh, certain things you want to highlight. The bio is the area to do it and don't feel that you can't change that up quite frequently. Um, one of the things that a business profile also allows you to do or your bio allows you to do is to add a link um, in your bio. So this is the area where you can link to your real estate website, a blog, or a particular listing that you may want to highlight. Uh, but sometimes people are wondering, well, which link is the best one to highlight there in the bio? Uh, well, you're not, because it only allows you for with one link, um, there's a tool such as Linktree that you can um, enable the account. And what Linktree will allow you to do is to showcase multiple links to different pages or different websites. Um, so then you're not limited just to one link on your bio. So what will happen is you'll enable this Linktree account. Um, there is a free version. A paid version gives you a little bit more functionality. But for the most part, the free version is all you really need. Um, and what will happen is if a visitor or a fan of your page clicks on that bio link, uh, it will display this little page where you can add the different links that you would like to um, include. So it could be a link to your real estate website, a link to book an appointment with you, or a featured property, for instance, that you may want to link to on YouTube or wherever it may reside. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is you'll want to keep a limited amount of links there. You don't want to end up having 50 different links that your user will have to scroll through. It will not make it as actionable. Uh, by putting the top three to four things you want your visitors to really look at um, is the best thing. And again, you can change these up uh, quite frequently. So as you have more featured properties or a particular property you want to feature, here is where these links can be added. Instagram stories. So um, what are they and how do we use them? Um, Instagram stories is, is a feature that allows you to upload photos, videos in a kind of a slide format. The content will only appear for 24 hours. Um, and Instagram stories allows you to um, basically customize your photos and videos with music, text, a um, little bit of drawing, uh, little effects to really highlight what you're trying to promote. Um, great examples and uh, engaging stories that people have used are putting videos. So maybe videos or a quick walkthrough of a particular property or a specific amenity in that property that you want to highlight, a little teaser. Question or polls. So it may be, you know, which countertop looks best, something with decor or maybe staging that you want to ask just to engage your followers. And highlight events. So if there's a particular community event or if there is an open house or something to that effect, this is where you want to kind of highlight those quick little. Um, Instagram stories for your um, followers. 
And Instagram story highlights um, can be archived. Uh, I, I apologize. Instagram stories can be archived. And what will happen is you can archive them into these little story highlights. So you'll see at times on certain accounts, they have these little circles at the top. And what you can do is categorize your previous stories um, into specific sections. So if there's staging tips or just listed properties or sold properties, maybe you have testimonials that you've highlighted on your story reels there. This is where you can archive them so that uh, after 24 hours, people can still view those particular stories. You can enable or disable any particular story highlights that you wish. So if it makes sense to display certain just listed properties, but maybe after a week, there's certain ones you want to remove, you can disable those um, within your Instagram account. One of the things that has come out is reels. So what are reels versus stories? I'm not gonna to get too in depth into what reels are, but reels are very short, quick, 15 second multi clips where you use video, audio, text, stickers, effects. If you or anyone you know of has used TikTok, it's a very similar concept that Instagram came out once TikTok became very popular. Um, reels can be shared in your stories. So once you've created them as reels, you can share them in your stories. They will appear on your feed if you wanted to post it in your feed. And they do have a dedicated area once they are posted that people can access them. Very similar to Instagram TV. So if you see this little button, it looks kind of like a reel with a little play button. Um, that will appear once you've created a reel. And this is where they'll be stored and your followers can access past reels that have been posted by you. Um, some of ideas of where reels can be used, um, some sort of top things that you can use reels for is educational content. So anything you wanna kind of educate your audience on, you can feature a property. It will just be a 15 second quick video or reel. So, um, it's more of a teaser. Uh, you can share behind the scenes content, kind of a day to day of what you or your team does. Um, you can announce, you know, open houses or events that maybe you're a part of. So again, it's quick little teasers, very similar to TikTok. It's kind of Instagram's way of competing with what TikTok does. Um, but those are quick little ways that it does give you some editing tools there. So it's a, a nice little way if you want to add a little pizzazz to your quick little stories and then post it in the story area. And it's another area where your audience can access um, your content that you're posting. In terms of the Instagram algorithm, um, people are always asking, how does Instagram decide what to show, when to show it and how often to show it? And really that all depends on this Instagram algorithm. And there are three primary signals in the algorithm that decide how your content is going to be seen and shown. And those three uh, signals are relationship, interest, and timeliness. And what do all of these mean? Well, the relationship is um, how you engage with your audience. So as you are posting your content, um, the exchange of direct messaging, um, your followers tagging you, you leaving comments back to your audience or your audience leaving comments on your posts. The algorithm looks at that and sees how much you engage with your audience and how much your audience engages with you. If they see when your posts are being um, posted that there is quite a bit of back and forth dialogue between you and your audience, it will tend to display more of that type of content back to you um, uh, and back to your audience. So they see that there is a relationship there and it, they'll, the algorithm will then decide to show more of that content to your audience. So it's a really good idea if you see that your audience is posting comments, leaving likes, 
that you kind of take that time and comment back to them. Um, so that way the algorithm sees that relationship between the both of you. Interest. So if your users tend to follow a particular type of content and they like a lot of it, and what happens is you tend to post that type of content, the algorithm will display more of that to those people. Um, seems st pretty straightforward. So two things, the relationship and showing more content that your audience tends to like. Um, so between listing properties, which is the obvious, um, some people like to follow uh, decor and tips, industry insights maybe, you know, how to stage for a particular thing. Um, when are the best times to sell? What are some tips? So those are the types of things you may want to have engagement with. So when your listings appear, uh, you already have that relationship and the algorithm will display your property listings. Timeliness and consistency. So these are crucial points. Um, you'll want to make sure you're posting when your audience is online. The best way to figure that out is if you're on a business account, you have this wonderful thing called insights. Uh, looking at your insights will let you know what days of the week, what times of the day your audience is most engaging with Instagram and your account. You'll want to post more of those crucial postings around that time. Then within that first sort of 30 minutes or so is the best time for engagement. So if the audience is engaging with that post as it's being posted, um, it will be displayed more the longer and the, at the top, so more people will end up seeing it. So the final big uh, rule is to make sure that you're consistent. So if you are going to post a certain amount of times a week, you'll wanna keep that consistency. You don't want weeks to go by on your account where there's no activity because your engagement will drop off and the algorithm will see your account as not being as active. So this is where um, I've discussed this a few times in our past uh, webinars where if you're a little bit busy, a scheduling tool really plays a good part. Whether it's the free tool in Facebook, um, which is the Creator Studio, or using something like a service that's a little bit paid a month, like later.com or Hootsuite, um, this will allow you to schedule your posts at a downtime, so it's consistently rolling out throughout the week. Um, those tools will also let you know a little bit deeper analytics, like which posts um, your followers are most engaging with, what hashtags they're most engaging with, things of that nature, where the Instagram account will only give you so much insight, these accounts go a little bit deeper in the analytics. Um, another great tip is one of the most important metrics that the algorithm looks, let, looks at is uh, how many times people have saved your post. So this little tag in the corner of your post, if a person is really interested in what you have to say or what you're displaying, they might want to save it for later to um, look at it at a later date or to save it for an idea. Um, this is one of the greatest algorithm sort of metrics. So you'll want to have your post save. Uh, some shareable or some savable post ideas are things like checklists. So it may be a checklist like the top things to think about when listing your home or when um, picking a real estate agent, maybe. Um, maybe a buyer's guide. So buyer's guide to XYZ or step-by-step you know, staging tips, uh, whatever those things may be, something that they'll want to save for later for when they need it. Um, the more saves you get, the um, Instagram algorithm looks at the account and says, well, this is good content. This is savable content. We'll display more of it. So this is a very good um, tip in terms of getting that algorithm to work to your advantage. And some post ideas. So uh, you don't always just want to display uh, listings, but obviously that is one of the biggest things that you'll be using for Instagram. 
um, where you're going to feature the current uh, listing that's on sale and showcase that property or that new development that you have. Um, another great posting idea is to feature properties that are coming out soon. So giving little teasers, um, maybe showing, uh, you know, a beautiful landscaped backyard or garden that they have or a particular gorgeous uh, kitchen that you might have. You don't necessarily need to show the full property, but just give little teasers, letting them know or letting the audience know to tune in at a later date to see that listing um, and creating that um, anticipation. Um, another great posting tip is to let your audience know about your success stories. So clients that you've worked with, um, showing the sold homes, showing the great happy buyers or the sellers that have happened and highlighting those great um, success stories that your team or you have had. Promoting specials and open houses. So Instagram is great for time sensitive things. So quick um, things like open houses, like I mentioned, using the reels or using the stories, showing something that will be up there for 24 hours or for a quick amount of time, and then it will disappear. Um, again, will create that urgency and people tend to look at stories quite a bit more these days than they do just the regular account. Uh, so that will capture their attention. Introducing yourself or your team is another great uh, posting idea, giving sort of that human side, getting them to uh, get to know you and your team and how you work. So that way, when they are ready to buy or sell, um, these are the reasons they would contact you. Providing insights and leadership, thought leadership. So if there are particular um, times of the year that it may be best to sell or buy or different um, sort of mortgage uh, information that's happening, um, these are things through your center that you uh, might be able to reshare and content ideas that would be good for people to uh, know in the industry. And some of the key things to remember when posting is post consistently. So whatever that magic number is you can stick with, whether it's manually, organically, or through a scheduling tool, uh, keep that consistency. Post in a timely manner and when your users are online. So really look at those insights and get to know when your audience is online. And it may not work the same from realtor to realtor. It could be the area that you're in. Uh, with the COVID um, pandemic, uh, you know, people's time and how they do things uh, are a little bit different than they were a year ago. And as things release a little bit and people go back to physically to their work, uh, that timing may change slightly. So it's really good to keep an eye on that. Um, then remix and reuse posts that were performing really well. Uh, things that you know you can reuse. Um, you can reshare again, uh, not reinvent the wheel. Uh, collaborate with like minds. So whether it's other agents or stagers, um, whatever that collaboration is, you can work together to post content uh, from each other and build quality relationships with your audience. So that way, when they do need to use you at different times of the year or different points in their life, they know exactly who to contact and use hashtags properly, which we will go into in a little bit. And one of the questions I get is, does it matter if I'm resharing an Instagram post directly from my Instagram account onto Facebook? So it does it automatically. I tie those two accounts in. Or is it better that I repost directly onto that account? Like for instance, Facebook. Um, I always suggest to clients that they post separately in each account. And the reason being is each account uses slightly different hashtags or the number of hashtags. They can use slightly different number of characters, um, best to use a certain amount of characters on particular platforms. 
And if you're using 30 or so um, hashtags in Instagram, and that goes directly on Facebook, um, it isn't the best thing to do because Facebook, for instance, it's recommended to use one to two hashtags as an ideal post. So if it's automatically posting from one account to the other, it doesn't give you that chance to edit that post slightly for the best practices. So in terms of hashtags, what are they and sort of what are the best practices of them? So hashtags basically index your videos and photo posts to make them searchable by social media users. Um, what you don't want to do is leave spaces between your hashtag words. So for example, Ontario Realtor would be one word, not two. Uh, you don't want to use any punctuations, just characters, so letters and numbers are fine. And you do want to know the hashtag requirements per platform. So what, how many to use and which ones for each platform. So you can include up to 30 hashtags on a regular post and 10 hashtags on a story. Um, if you try to include more, your comment or caption won't be posted. Uh, but just because you can use that many doesn't mean that you should use that many. Um, there really isn't a right or wrong number of hashtags you can use. Um, some of it is going to be a little bit trial and error, but um, there are some statistics that show kind of where you should begin and then where to go from there. So the consensus is that the ideal amount of hashtags to start out with when you're kind of starting out with an account and getting to know your audience is about 11. That's a good number for posts and one to two on your stories. Um, once you use that amount, you'll want to do some testing and look at your analytics and see how many to add, which ones maybe to delete and kind of take it from there. Again, just because it allows you to use 30, that doesn't mean it's necessarily the right thing to do. Um, the question again is, well, where do I search for hashtags? The easiest way is to search in Instagram. So you're going to pull up the Instagram search feature. You're going to start off with putting in a basic hashtag such as real estate, and it will give you kind of like-minded, similar trending hashtags to get you an idea of kind of what people are typically searching for and using. You're going to research your audience and see kind of what they are interested in. Uh, you're going to research and definitely recommend researching your competitors, especially the ones that you could see are being successful online. And you're, you, you can also check hashtag generators. So there is a few different um, generators. You can Google it, but a couple that are really good is all-hashtags.com or besthashtags.com. I will list those on the uh, Facebook group, so not to worry uh, about writing those down right now. Um, and then you'll want to see and view your insights to see, once you've started using some hashtags, which ones are generating the most engagement in your posts. Um, so one of the ways that you can check, so if you've, for instance, found a hashtag such as Milton Real Estate, and you've used it in your post, um, you can click on your post and see how many people it, the post has reached, how many impressions it's made, and how many of those impressions came from hashtags. So then you can start to see how well your hashtags are doing. Again, Instagram insights give you somewhat of a limited picture. If you're using scheduling tools such as later.com or Hootsuite, those will give you a little bit more in depth uh, analytics, such as down to the hashtag, how many people, you know, how well each hashtag is doing. So um, for those that are a little bit more experienced, they may want to look into some of those types of tools. What I suggest is using what I call a hashtag recipe. So you don't just want to fill your hashtags on your post with just the most top popular um, hashtags, because what will happen is millions of other people that are using them uh, will basically um, 
override your posts. So your posts will be seen there for a second or two and then it'll start dropping down because there may be accounts and there may be millions of accounts that are more popular than yours. So what I always recommend is using three to five very popular hashtags. And those are ones that are 300,000 to a million trending. Using three to five moderate ones. So those that range in that 80,000 to 300,000 mark. Using three to five niche specific hashtags and one to two branded ones. So branded specifically for your real estate uh, company or business. Um, and what are they? So what does that mean? So three to five very popular ones could be ones like real estate, just listed for sale. Three to five moderate ones would be something like a real estate broker, home buyer, real estate agent. Uh, niche specific ones are targeted towards something like a neighborhood. So Milton Homes, um, Hawthorne Properties, uh, something within that area that you're buying or selling for your clients. And one to two branded ones are, your, for instance, your real estate team name. So uh, Remax Real Estate Center, something to that effect. Um, so if you take that into account, three, six, nine, and then two branded ones, you're looking at 11. So that's that sweet spot for starting off with your hashtags, seeing what's working and adding to those particular hashtags. And just to give you a little bit of insight, um, the very popular hashtags uh, will basically give you seconds uh, of your post being up there. Uh, what the idea of the moderate hashtags is that hopefully it will allow your post to stay there for a few days. And for those people looking for that really specific hashtag, so maybe like uh, Homes and Milton for sale, um, that post will remain kind of out there for a lot longer. Uh, so by having a combination of all those hashtags, it will hopefully allow your post to be displayed for a greater audience and for a lot longer time before it starts dropping underneath other posts that are being posted. And some other tips to keep in mind when uh, thinking of hashtags is you really want to try to entice your followers to follow your branded hashtag. So a branded hashtag acts kind of like a personal profile. Um, what Instagram has allowed people to do is um, now, for instance, if I put in real Remax Real Estate Center and I decide to follow it, it will display all the different posts of people who have used that branded hashtag. So the nice thing about me following this a branded hashtag is, and if I'm following a particular agent that's maybe also used that hashtag is, it's now showing their post twice in my feed. So it shows it once for this branded hashtag profile and it's showing it again for their own business profile. So it gives your user twice the amount of um, chances of seeing and engaging with your posts. Um, so again, this is something where you might want to include in your bio, you're going to include in some of your posts, and hopefully, um, depending on the user, they will follow it, which will give you another chance of them seeing your post and engaging with you. Well, one of the things you'll want to do is you want to make sure you switch up your hashtags. So you might find these great 11 hashtags, but you don't constantly want to use the exact same ones. Um, if you are displaying a post about um, the top staging tips, you're not gonna use necessarily the same post when you're listing a property versus some industry news. You'll want to change those up slightly because otherwise you're gonna start looking spammy and the algorithm takes note of that. You also wanna avoid gimmicky hashtags. So a lot of times people will use like for like hashtags. So if you like my, uh, account all like yours. Um, those might get you a couple of extra followers, but it's not the target audience that you want um, in the end. You'll want an audience that are buyers and sellers, not necessarily someone that just wants to like your account to gain another like. So um, something to keep in mind there. 
Now moving on, um, you'll want to post video content on Instagram. 80% um, of online marketers now use video uh, and the social engagement that um, happens and the shares that happen are 12 times more than uh, just using images and text combined. 86% of people who are shopping online use um, video to tour a neighborhood and 70% of them tend to rely on video to see the inside of a home. And that is more relevant than ever uh, during COVID and the pandemic. Um, it's easy to understand why people tend to rely on Instagram TV to upload their um, home tours now. Um, and there are some things that you wanna keep in mind in terms of Instagram TV. Uh, so, What's happening with Instagram TV is that it is designed to basically mimic what a TV looks like on your phone. And it um, allows you to go a little bit deeper than just Instagram reels and stories. So you can have longer content and more engaging content, especially when you're doing kind of like a 360 or a tour of the property. Um, Instagram TV also allows you to save your live appearances. So if you are doing a live tour um, on Instagram, it will allow you to save that into your Instagram TV area of your account. Some of the things to keep in mind is on Instagram TV, videos need to be 60 seconds or longer. Um, if they are under 60 seconds, even 59 seconds, you can only then post it to a Instagram post. It will not save in your Instagram uh, TV area of your account. Um, videos that are 15 minutes long, you can upload using your phone. Um, but anything over that um, amount of time and up to 60 minutes, you do need to use a computer or laptop with Wi-Fi in order to upload that video. The video format must be MP4 format. And um, there are specific ratios that um, you need if you want the video to be vertical or horizontal. If it's outside of those aspect ratio specs, it will not allow you to upload it. So um, this is where your professional videographer um, might come in handy. And if you are using your phone to do those videos, um, it tends to save them in the aspect ratio that you require. So you, sh you shouldn't have to worry. And there's a limit to the amount of size the video can be. Um, and you can customize that initial video cover photo or that still at the beginning of the video um, if you need to. So the, the, in terms of that little video uh, still, um, you want to choose a cover that's really going to make that initial first impression and grab that attention of that person. Um, what you can do um, in when you're uploading your video is you can skip through each part of your video and choose the still that works the best. If you find that you can't really find the proper still or you want to add a little bit of a title or something different to that initial static cover, you can create your own and then upload it before the video gets posted. Um, so that's another option that you can have. Um, some of the key and top takeaways that I'd like for you to think about is um, you'll want to make sure that you do have your account set up for business. I do encourage it only because it does give you that capability to really add things to your bio and the insights that it provides. Uh, you'll want to make sure that your bio is optimized. So having all those different things, such as the type of real estate you're involved with, your location, how they can contact you, possibly um, some hashtags that are specific or branded hashtags that are specific. You'll want to be consistent in when you're posting and you'll want to review those insights to see what when your audience is online and what is working and what isn't. Um, and how to slightly tweak your post uh, as a result of those insights. Uh, you'll want to use stories to provide some high engaging content to your audience. Again, you can use reels as well. And then 
it gives you some editing tools that then you can repost those little real videos to your stories. You'll want to start with um, a modest amount of hashtags, something such as 11 hashtags, and follow kind of that hashtag recipe that I provided um, and sort of monitor what's working, what your competitors are doing, what your audience is looking for, and add to those hashtags. And when you're posting, try to use videos where possible, um, especially when displaying your um, properties that are first uh, being listed. Uh, because the engagement rates um, tend to be a little bit greater uh, on Instagram with video than they are with just text and images. And I will leave it for a question and answer. I think we have a bit of time. I'm just going to stop sharing here. And I will let Louise let me know if we have any questions. All right, Jennifer, do you see any? Um, yes, and actually Wayne's got a really, really great question. Why would, I, why would I use Facebook and Instagram if they seem to have the same people? Why would I use one over the other? Well, to be honest, actually um, the older audience, and when I say older, I, I take that from my kids. They're always telling me, if you wanna post a picture of us, post it on Facebook versus Instagram. Uh, the uh, demographic on Instagram tends to be a little bit younger. So it might be um, first time buyers and it could be people looking for ideas. So maybe they're not necessarily ready to buy or sell. Um, and I find that, uh, but, but they will be eventually at some point in time. Uh, and I find Facebook uh, provides um, a little bit older demographic. It could be people transitioning to a larger home or they're downsizing because um, they're older and their kids have left. So I would say you definitely don't want to lose that potential audience from one or the other. You don't have to create double the work. You can use scheduling tools, use the same content and slightly modify just the things that are needed for each account. But I definitely don't agree that it's exactly the exact same audience on both platforms. Do you agree that having that that sweet spot and the right hashtags can create a wider um, exposure, not necessarily to your um, your immediate followers, but provide access to more fault to more accounts that you would normally not have following you? Yes, I, I have seen um, not just in the real estate uh, industry, but a lot of different industries that using that combination, that recipe of the high trending hashtags and the little bit moderate and more specifically branded um, does really work. Um, and what you're trying to do is eventually get them all to kind of follow that branded, get to know your brand. But especially when you're starting off, you do need to use some of the trending ones to get you there. So that comp, but using all trending would make your post disappear really quick because there's so many other accounts that are, might be a higher weighted in the algorithm. So using that combination will hopefully, like I mentioned, um, if your content is unique and good and you're posting at the right time that your typical demographic and audience is there and using those hashtags, that combination of all those things will hopefully uh, display your post um, to the right audience, leave it there for a good amount of time and um, you know they'll start engaging and that whole process continues. Excellent. And Jennifer has put the link to our private Facebook page um, in the chat box. Please make sure that you um, send in a request to join as Sylvia is available on that page to answer any questions and certainly post any links um, or references to what was discussed today. And Sylvia, can you remind the group what you'll be covering yes. next week? So next Monday, we will be um, talking about uh, paid ads specifically, Facebook and Instagram. Um, uh, it's a very good uh, series to tune into. There has been some changes that have been rolling out, mainly in the States uh, at the beginning of the year, but now it is going to be in effect in Canada as of December where you have to make sure that you're selecting a special category for your ads. If you're selling a property or listing a home, you now have to notify 
that in as a category, um, a special category. And that will play a limit to who you can target and how you can target them. So we're gonna go into depth a little bit about how to properly set up your ad, what things really work. And we're gonna talk about that specials category because what happens is if you don't check that off, now your ads can be flagged, they could be taken down and your accounts could even be suspended if you are not checking that specials category for real estate on uh, Facebook ads and Instagram ads. Good so to know. Monday. And then I will be accessible through the Facebook group up until December 18th for any questions on any of the series that we've done uh, since we've started. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And Jennifer, do you see anything else in the chat or are we good? Um, that was it. There was just one, one quick question about how to convert to a business account, which is going to your hamburger, going into your settings, going to account, and then scrolling down to the bottom of that page and choosing either business or if you so desire, right, Sylvia, the rare creator account. Sorry, you got, you paused a little bit. The whole screen froze. So I'm not sure. Oh, no, no mine too. <laughs> so I'm not sure what exactly you said, but. Oh, just uh, the converting to a business account. Make sure that you're on your profile. Click on the hamburger, select settings, go yes. to account, scroll down to the bottom and uh, convert to a business account. That will give you the access. Yeah. All those and the only the only thing I would say that you want to be careful of when you're switching from personal to a business is now it's open to the public, whereas on your personal, you could have had it uh, private until you've allowed the person to be on your account. So you want to just go through your account and make sure that everything that's posted there should be there. Anything that's personal you don't want to see on your public business account, maybe remove it before switching to a business account just to make sure that everything's professional and anything that you don't want on your public business account, remove that prior to switching over. That would be my only sort of caveat before switching. Okay, great advice. All right, everyone, go ahead on to the Facebook group if you have any questions and we will see you next week. Thanks, Sylvia. Thanks, Jennifer. Talk Thank you. you Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.